This is a story about companies that harvest human skin and bones and tendons and process them into medical implants. It's a booming market, giving human tissue a second life. You might say, what's wrong with that? In fact, you might know someone, like we do, who's walking around right now with a corpse tendon that repaired a busted knee. This is a legitimate industry, for the most part. These products can heal, even save lives. But I'm going to tell you two stories about how illegal tissue can feed that legal billion-dollar market. Here's the list of characters you'll be hearing about. A Florida company called RTI and its German subsidiary, Tutogen. A Ukrainian morgue named Nikolaev. A Russian coroner named Igor Aleshenko. And a formal dental surgeon from Brooklyn, now a convicted felon named Michael Mastro Marino, who stole body parts, including from the corpse of the famous British commentator, Alistair Cook. One last point before we get into the guts of the story. Our team looked at more than 200 companies. We talked to everyone from industry insiders and government officials to surgeons and convicted felons. We read through thousands of court documents, regulatory reports, corporate records, and internal company memos. Using a powerful analytical software called Palantir, we analyzed data on imports, inspections, infections, and accident reports filed with the Food and Drug Administration, the U.S. agency that oversees the human tissue trade. And we tried repeatedly to talk to the company that ended up being the focus of our investigation. But executives wouldn't talk to us or respond to written questions. So here's our story. There's this company called RTI Biologics, which started out as a nonprofit division of the University of Florida. Since breaking away, it has become one of the world's largest publicly traded for-profit tissue processors. As we dug into this global trade, we started to see a pattern. RTI and its German subsidiary, Tutagen, have repeatedly obtained tissue from suppliers that were later investigated for allegedly stealing human parts. First, let's go to Ukraine. This February, a few months into our research, authorities raided a morgue in the southern city of Mykolaiv. We talked to investigators there. They suspect body parts were stolen from cadavers brought in for autopsy. They told us signatures were forged to make it seem like families had given their consent. The Ukrainian investigators said tissue might have been taken illegally from as many as half the bodies that passed through the morgue. During the raid, police seized autopsy reports written in English, lab results apparently destined for Tutagen, and bottles of human tissue labeled Tutagen made in Germany. But one thing really caught their eye, an envelope stuffed with cash labeled NIK1. That's the U.S. government's abbreviation for the Nikolai morgue. See, the morgue was registered as a tissue bank with the FDA. What's interesting is the phone number listed for that morgue was identical to 24 other Ukrainian morgues also registered in the U.S. And what's more, when we called that number, we reached an automated system for tutagen, which makes medical implants out of human tissue. In early 2008, Tutagen merged with RTI. Remember, that's the big American for-profit tissue processor. Back in the 90s, Tutagen got its tissue from suppliers in places like Estonia, Latvia, Czech Republic, and Hungary, where tissue can be taken without consent unless a donor opts out while he's still alive. Families complained in some cases. Uh, police launched investigations, but they didn't go anywhere. We got a hold of internal records that show Tutagen has been getting tissue from Ukraine for more than a decade and supplying RTI. The company appears to work through a middleman there, a Russian coroner named Igor Aleshenko. Until the raid in February, Aleshenko was director of BioImplant, a company owned by the Ukrainian Ministry of Health which collected the tissue from regional morgues to send to Tutagen. Internal records show Tutagen had real problems doing business with Aleshenko. In a 2002 memo marked strictly confidential with four exclamation points, Tutagen executives urged an exit strategy from Ukraine. They wrote that a middleman, believed to be Aleshenko, kept demanding more money, and they didn't know what happened to the money they sent him to pay the morgues. Despite these misgivings, Tutagen didn't pull out of Ukraine. 
Instead, the company expanded its regional network. Over the years, Ukrainian authorities have investigated two other morgues that supply Tutagen for allegedly stealing tissue, bullying families, and forging consents. No one has ever been convicted. As for Aleshenko, local news reports say he left Ukraine following the February raid. Neither police nor health officials will tell us where he went. So where are we today? RTI doesn't import its Ukrainian tissue through Germany anymore. The Ukrainian tissue bank BioImplant is exporting directly to the United States. But foreign tissue is still a small part of RTI's supply chain. Like other big players in the industry, RTI actually gets most of its tissue in the U.S. But U.S. law hasn't kept up with this rapidly evolving industry. And that brings us to our second story. Here at home, RTI operates a nonprofit called RTI Donor Services, which directly recovers tissue from American cadavers. RTI has also contracted with tissue banks in 23 states. One of those suppliers was New Jersey-based Biomedical Tissue Services. It was run by a former dental surgeon from Brooklyn, Michael Mastro Marino. RTI started working with Mastro Marino in 2002, but got nervous when staff complained that he was verbally abusive and had ties to organized crime. So RTI hired a law firm to run a background check. And here's what the firm advised. The good doctor has been on Santa's naughty list for quite some time. I would strongly encourage you not to do business with someone that has this kind of resume. Instead, RTI drew up a new contract with Biomedical Tissue Services. In place of Mastro Marino's name was that of his newly licensed off-site medical director. RTI continued to work with the company and Mastro Marino as their main contact until 2005. That's when the company found out what he had really been up to for the last three years. From funeral homes in the Northeast, Mastro Marino stole body parts, some infected with cancer, hepatitis, or HIV, from more than 1,000 corpses. One source of tissue was the body of Alistair Cook, that famous British broadcaster and host of Masterpiece Theater. He died at 95 of lung cancer, but his death certificate was altered and then his cancer-ridden tissue was sold for $11,000. There were massive recalls. Five companies pulled back a total of 25,000 products made from the human tissue Mastro Marino supplied. And police got on his case. He's now serving time at a maximum security prison after pleading guilty to conspiracy and body theft. And the families of his victims filed a lawsuit against RTI alleging negligence. That case goes to trial this October in New York. When we started looking through court files and started talking to people, we realized that neither companies nor the FDA had ever tried to verify whether consent was actually given. No one cross-checked the files until after the industry was alerted to a pending criminal investigation. So what's the bottom line here? Why should we care? Well, you should care because regulations are ineffective. Given the enormous profits that can be made in the industry, it's shockingly easy to get into. Just fill out a one-page form on the FDA website and you're in business according to those who have done it. You can harvest tissue yourself. You can distribute it on the open market. You don't even have to be inspected. In fact, according to our analysis of FDA data, only about 40% of tissue banks in operation today show any record of being inspected by the agency. So why do we need this fancy software to figure out the story? Well, you can see how complicated all the networks can be. These companies and their operations stitch an intricate network across the globe, but those connections are buried in paperwork and data sets. Ultimately, we uploaded more than one million companies, people, document, and events into the system. So to sum up, the human tissue trade is a perfect example of demand outstripping regulation. It's not surprising that some unscrupulous characters sensing massive profits may have latched on to an otherwise legitimate industry. And that's a fact the FDA and Congress have overlooked. 